Hello there, Colin. Uh, We've known each other a little while now. We're friends, yes? Buddies. Pals. A squad. A fam. Rose. Is this going anywhere? Oh, I'm sorry. In a hurry, are we? Unusual for you. Normally, you'll spend hours listening to Inigo and me prattle, arranging us in all sorts of convoluted situations just in case we happen to say something new or unusual. In fact, you know what? Here's some new dialogue for you. Bippity boppity jingle jangle. Got la gear, got la gear. She sells seashells on the seashore. I said a hip. Hop, the hippie, the hippie to the hip hip hopper, you don't stop, the rocket to the bang bang boogie, say up, jump, the boogie to the rhythm of the boogie, the beat. Anyway, I was going to ask you what you thought of lunch. Lunch? Lunch! A meal! In the middle of the day! In a tavern, perhaps? What with you? No, not with me, don't be ridiculous, I'm a fictional character, we can't eat food together. However, I do know a chap. Yeah, why not? Set it up. <laughs> Looks good to me. So, uh, so I guess we're on. Right. We are on. There's yes. A, there's a camera over there. So if we look yes. in that. Yes. I'll look at that and I'll look at you and we'll be in business. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hello. So, what he said? Yeah. <laughs> God, it's awkward, isn't it, when we start? Okay, we'll yeah. get into the swing of it. Um, do you want to? Do you want to do the? I don't know if we're in focus because my eyes don't see. Yeah, it looks far pretty good away. to me. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that. I think. Yeah, oh, yeah. I think it's looking. I think it's looking good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, we'll edit that bit. It'll be really yeah, slick on the we, video. We cut, we cut all that. Out. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I've come to meet not smart blue cat for a change, but no, much less smart cat. Um, What's your name again? Uh, yeah, so uh, Jules Russell. I'd just like to take a moment to say a special thank you to Chelsea, Ed's Gaming, Dante Di Lorenzo, and these channel members who all helped make it possible for me to meet the incredibly handsome, super smart, genuinely modest, and surprisingly tall Joseph Russell. Hello, um, I make Lucian, and I voice him, and uh, if you're watching this, that's probably where you might have heard of me from. Um, I'm here with the lovely Colin. We've been having a really nice chat and a lovely lunch. Um, it's been a really nice afternoon. We just thought we'd stick a camera on and see if anything interesting came out of our conversation that people would like to watch. <laughs> if not, we'll probably just throw all this away, um, but we'll see what happens. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So... Yeah, so yeah. what do you want to talk about? Yeah, so um, so Colin's prepared <laughs> nothing uh, for this. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I thought we could we could talk about, about... We've been talking a lot about games, about Skyrim modding and stuff. Yeah. Um, I can talk about my mod. I can talk about stuff that we like. So um, this mod, is this Croc or Lucian? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we haven't mentioned Croc yet. Okay. Um, yes, so... I imagine people will be more interested in Lucian. Really? Um, but uh, but Croc, if you haven't heard of it, Croc do is do? my... my... <laughs> <laughs> you saved this for the video. Okay, Croc <laughs> is my lovingly ripped off um, uh, follower mod, which is available now to download. I shot myself in the foot a bit with it by releasing it on April Fool's Day, because a lot of people, I think, assumed it wasn't actually a real thing. It is a real thing. It adds a friendly crocodile Argonian follower, um, which is heavily inspired by the original video games. Did you ever, you ever come across those? I never did. No. I've, I've seen them since. They're magnificent. Since watching them you should, you should, you should def I thoroughly recommend to anyone uh, to check out Croc Legend of Legobos, which is 1997. Um, you can still get it on PC, um, I think, if you find the CD on eBay. It does still work. Um, it's amazing. And anyway, the lead character of that is Croc, and I have put him in Skyrim, and he can follow you uh, in the game. And he mainly just says, totally, totally, totally. Um, but it's, sort of, it's, it's silly, and it makes me happy. So, so, so totally, totally, what does that mean? That means Oh, it means everything, everything. Colin. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's very deep and meaningful. <laughs> he's, he's a guru. Um, and yeah. Okay. Um, but no, so Lucian um, is my follower mod that you can also download right now. He is a friendly young imperial scholar who's in Skyrim on an expedition and he's looking for a friend 
And the idea is that he starts out not knowing how to defend himself or how to well, how to be an adventurer, and then kind of develops over time. You say that, but if you get him early, he's pretty more useful than the uh, beginner character. Yeah. So. so he starts at level ten. Yeah. Um, so if obviously if you're level one when you pick him up, then he's yeah. he's quite tough. But I had to I had to pick that level somewhere, yeah. you know, for balance, rather than having him just completely scaled. Because then if you're level eighty when you pick him up, then um then he'll already be super powerful, which yeah, doesn't work true. either. So we had to draw the line somewhere. So. I'm so would you advise picking him up at sort of level yeah. 20 or...? Well, no, um, pick, him up, pick him up as early as you like, really. Yeah. He's got commentary on the main quest right from um, Unbound. So if you're using Alternate Start uh, to, to actually have him recruited for Unbound, then he's got a little bit of commentary on that as well. So you can pick him up as early as you like, and you, you know, otherwise you'll miss out on some early stuff. But the idea, he's designed so that you can pick him up at any point in the playthrough. But yeah, I guess if you pick him up very early and you're worried about everything being super duper balanced, then you might find he's a little bit OP at the start. But it shouldn't it shouldn't be the end of the world. Is the idea. Mm. Yeah. He's a lovely fella. Thank you. I'm glad you think <laughs> so. Um. so. But we were talking earlier about his um, his morality, what he he lines. Whereas if we know from from Inigo, he'll. Inigo pretty much aligns with whatever the player thinks. Yeah, so on, on the Inigo note, Inigo is fantastic and wonderful, and if you're watching Colin's channel, you probably already know him. Um, but if you haven't played with him, please pick him up. He's the, the king of follower mods, and he's magnificent and inspired so much of what I do with Lucian. Um, but yeah, uh, so one of the design choices with Inigo is obviously he has his own character. You know, he's he's got this wonderfully in-depth personality. Um, but he's quite happy to go along with the player with a lot of the, I think yeah. it's fair to say, most of the main game content he's happy to go along with. Um, whereas I chose when I was designing Lucian that I wanted him to have his own very clear opinions on stuff. Because I had this, I think for me, the character comes first before the gameplay. Like he needs to feel true to the to the writing, um, even if that sometimes comes at the expense of him being able to be suitable for every possible player character, because he doesn't work with every possible player character. Um, so he has his own opinions, and that's something I'm planning on developing a lot more as I develop the mod further, because there's a lot more stuff coming in the future. Um, so but rather than him being by your side from the moment you pick him up, if yeah. you make the wrong choices, you can actually lose him. Yeah, so there's at the moment there's only one specific circumstance in the game where you can lose him, which uh, spoiler alert, uh, <laughs> if you're you know interested in discovering this. But um, if you uh, if you take Lucian with you um, when you're given the quest to kill Parthenax, and um, and if you if you're under very specific circumstances, well, there's two. If you tell him you're going to kill Parthenax, then he'll leave you, and he'll leave your party, and um, you can you get the op opportunity to potentially re-recruit him after you've killed Parthenax. Okay. So if you, you kill Parthenax... Uh, and what would change his mind then? So you get several different dialogue options depending on where you are in the main quest, in Dawnguard, and in Dragonborn. So you can tell him there's a group of vampires who want to take over the world and I need your help. Or you can tell him there's a, a insane dragon priest from thousands of years ago who's coming back and wants you to tell him about Marak. Um, and I haven't really done commentary in the Dawnguard and Dragonborn quests in much depth apart from that. But those are two compelling reasons you can give him. Or you can say, I need, we need, still need to stop Alduin, you know, so... Or I think there's maybe a fourth generic option. It's been a long time since I last tested that myself. I can't quite remember. But the idea is you're saying, okay, we've had our differences, but there are more important things at stake and I need your help. So we so, can get him back. So you I can get him back under those circumstances. But what he won't forgive you for is if you tell him you're not going to kill Parthenax, and then you take him with you, and then you attack Parthenax while he's in your party. So Lucian will see that as a betrayal because you've lied to him and then gone and done the thing he specifically didn't want you to do. And on that side, he'll side with Parthenax. So he'll leave your party and he'll join the fight against you. Which, as a gameplay thing, I really like because it's like a boss fight, sort of. He's not, it depends on how much you trained him, but the more you've trained him, the more difficult a boss he then is to fight. So it can potentially make the fight quite a lot harder. And then there's unique dialogue there, both with you, the player, and if you've got Inigo with you for that, they've got unique dialogue. Oh, have they? For you know um yeah for them against each other it's quite emotional stuff um and then ultimately you have no choice but to kill lucian as part of that so there's dialogue then for if inigo's killed lucian in the past next quest that's different means, to the generic this so, means evander is gonna have to go and get that bloody dragon it's stuff. one for you to explore yeah <laughs> he's gonna have to do it there's not a lot of it he it's very quick it'll only be a couple of minutes of video 
Um, but there is some unique dialogue there that I don't think many people will discover um, because it's quite a specific set of circumstances. But yeah. That means I'm going to have to do that. I'll give it a go. I look forward to the, to the video. Oh. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry, have I just given you more of a job to do? Ivanda was not going to do that yeah. side of the quest. He was going to do Daedric quests and then sit patiently, wait for Indigo version 3, yeah. and then do the Thieves Guild and right. the Dark Brotherhood. Right. He was going to be put on hold. Well. But he was going to have to go and do the Dragon Quest. Yeah. Well, enjoy. Um, so that's that's the only circumstance where he can leave you at the moment. Yeah. But um, So you, you can get him back unless you... So if you tell him you're going to kill Parthenax, and then you, you know, if you tell him that up front, he'll leave you and you can get him back. Only after you've completed that quest and killed him. So he'll say, come back to me when it's done, or something, I want no part of this. Whereas if you tell him you're not going to kill Parthenax, and then kill him anyway, you're that's excited. the no going back, you're going to have to kill him, one of you's going to die, kind of thing. And obviously yeah. if you kill him, you can't get him back. Obviously, yeah, yeah. I spoil that a little bit in the trailer for Lucian. And for all its beauty, this land has its monsters. But my friend has shown me that by working together, we can fight them. Even if we don't always see eye to eye. And that's um, where he's got dialogue with Inigo as well? Yeah. So that, that's the circumstance where he has dialogue with Inigo when they're on opposite sides in that fight. And when I first launched the Lucian Inigo interactions, I'd messed up that condition so that though that dialogue would play under any circumstance when they were fighting each other. So you might have already heard it if you tested it out very early on. But that dialogue was only ever intended to play specifically in that Parthenax betrayal. This so, is if he's if Inigo is standing over No, this is Lucian's while Inigo course. and Lucian are fighting while, each other. Okay. They have a little exchange back and forth. And then when Lucian's dead and Inigo's standing over his corpse, he has a unique comment which is different to Inigo's comment if Lucian dies under other circumstances. Goodbye, Lucian. You... you were a good man, and far stronger than you ever thought you were. I will miss you, my friend. So you can you can see that, and Gary has done a lovely performance for those lines, as he does for everything. He does. You know, he's amazing. It's amazing the amount of emotion, can, because he's doing a voice, right, for Inigo. This is... I don't understand how Gary is able to record, what is it, nearly 8,000 lines of dialogue in um... the Inigo voice. Yeah, you should know. You've probably seven, recorded most of it. Seven thousand counters so far, but yeah, 7, what he's got for version yeah. three, I've no idea. But... Oh, ridiculous amounts, I'm sure. Oh. But to be able to do that voice, when I did the loose, so you know how they do impressions of each other. Yeah. So when I did the impression of Lucian doing an impression of Inigo, I did three or four takes, and my voice was shot. Look at me! I am a big blue cat. Where are my fleas? Let us go on an adventure, my friend. Like, I couldn't, I couldn't do that for longer than that. So the fact that he manages to sustain it for thousands of lines, I have no idea how he does that. But also then how through that voice that he's doing, he managed to portray such a range of emotion. Yeah. You know, it's such a compelling performance. It's not just the comedy bit. It's like, this is a whole character. It's incredible. And I thoroughly recommend to anyone starting out making a follow-up mod, don't try and do that. Because it's really <laughs> difficult. You know, make it. I always tell people to use a voice that's similar to their speaking voice, which is what I do to Lu for Lucian, because it's the only way that you can do that amount of dialogue. But yeah. Gary is a legend, and we all he, he bow said, down to him. He said that he initially made Inigo for himself, yes. and he couldn't stand listening to his own voice. Yes, I, yeah, I read about but, that. Yeah. yeah, I loved his line as well about how he didn't set out to make a follower, he wanted to make an Inigo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is so when you set out to make Lucian, did you? Um, intend to release him publicly yes. right yes, I did. at the beginning? So uh, the, I started down the whole modding thing. Um, I, I write as a sort of hobby thing. It's not a full-time career or anything. How many books have you written? I did one book when I was 14? very young, when I was 14. It's, I don't recommend that to people. You can, you can read it if you're interested. It's on Amazon, but it's, it's not very good. You know, it's not well written. A 14-year-old has written it. Um, I'm proud of it for what it was at the time. You know, I was I was pleased with it then, but it's not reflective of my writing now. But then I did a second, I did a novella, so it's only like 80 pages long or something, um, called Lonely Worlds, and I did that much more recently. And that, I think, is much more... It's still a few years old. It's still a bit kind of... Is that the one that Shirley Curry that's read? That's the one that Shirley yeah. read, so you can see it on yeah. her channel if you want to listen to it, or you can buy it on Amazon yeah. for uh, 99 cents. Um on the Kindle version, which is as low as Amazon, let me see the price. Cheap, but, but twice the price, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, 
so I did that, but I wanted to, it's obviously really difficult to get into the writing industry as a self, because it was self-published, I couldn't get an agent for publishing, I'm, you know, I'm not that good at it. Um, <laughs> so, but I wanted to try and get my writing out there a little bit more, and I was obviously a massive fan of Skyrim, so I thought, you know, can I make something for Skyrim? Because I do, I do engineering, um, it's my, my degree, and I'm currently doing a PhD in engineering. So I've got a lot of the coding stuff kind of there, and I write and I voice act. You know, I've done I've done acting at school. I was in plays and things. Um, so I thought that could kind of it seemed like a no-brainer as a way of marrying together all my things that I enjoyed doing. So I thought, well, this could be a great way to yeah to try and get my writing out there and sort of I guess piggyback on Skyrim's success a little bit. And I was massively inspired by these amazing mods like Inigo and interesting NPCs as well, which is one of my favourite, um, one of my first and favourite uh, mods and follower mods. Um, so yeah, I thought I'd give it a go. So I set out definitely with the plan of releasing it. I never imagined I would make it, I would, you know, I never imagined I'd still be doing it in, what's it been now, three and a half years or something? I never thought I'd still be at it. And I never thought I'd be lucky enough to have, you know, the response to it that I've got, which I'm, I'm you know, I am very lucky to have, there are quite a few people out there who are quite, who quite enjoy the mod, which is a really nice thing. Mm. Um, I never thought I'd be able to have, sit here with you talking about it, for instance. Is Lucian finished? No, no. Um, it's, it's an ongoing project that I plan on continuing to work on at least until The Elder Scrolls 6 comes out. When that comes out, I'm expecting people will move away from Skyrim. There are a lot of people who will stay with Skyrim, but there'll be a lot of people who want to move on to the next thing. And I would like to, in some form, depending on, we don't know what modding tools will be available for that, but I'd like to bring Lucian to that in some form. Time travel. I don't know, I don't know what the setting yeah. will be, yeah. but if you've, again, spoiler alert for Lucian's quest content, but he has a Dwemer ruin with an Oblivion Gate in it, and an Oblivion Gate is like a, a dimensional portal I through which I could hand wave yeah. the lore enough to make him go anywhere. I so, don't know what that was when I found it. Right, yes, because if you've not played Oblivion and you're not no. familiar with that, then yeah. you wouldn't know what it means necessarily. But what it means to me as a writing tool is it's a get out of jail free card <laughs> that lets me do whatever I want when Elder Scrolls 6 comes around. Um, so we'll see what happens on that front. But um, until then, I certainly plan on continuing to develop Lucian. Um, I always planned on covering all the major quest lines. So at the moment he doesn't have anything to say about the Fuse Guild, or the Dark Brotherhood, or Dawnguard, or Dragonborn. I think that's those are the main ones. So how would Lucian feel about you joining the themes? themes yes, we wanted to talk about morality. That yes, was, that's we where did. we started here. We've gone I, up on a tangent. I knew there was a um, point to Yes, this. okay. So the Thieves Guild, I think, is, is a nice one, because that is a kind of grey area. It's not... Like, the Dark Brotherhood is evil, right? I mean, well... You can, yeah. you can. There's, there's great mods for it that make it, you know, more morally justifiable by giving reasons why characters might be bad. Um, you know, to give it more of a moral code. But ultimately, you are a group of void worshipping assassins. Like, it's not, it's not wholesome necessarily. Um, so that's something that Lucian just clear cut wouldn't be on board with. Um, whereas the Thieves Guild is still, you're stealing, so it's not great but it's not, in my mind, quite as bad as the murdering thing. And I think there's part of Lucian that would find that quite exciting to be going around, sneaking around at rooftops and nicking things. And I think he might try like a whole Robin Hood sort of vibe with that, of maybe stealing um, from people who might be more deserving of it and giving to people who might need, might be in need. Um, so I think it might be possible when I come around to doing that commentary to persuade Lucian to join you. Um, Lucian has an approval mechanic. I don't know if you're aware, he has a stat that keeps track of how much he likes you. No, I didn't. Okay, so he has, it's under the hood, kind of, and you can see it if you're on PC, on uh, if you have Sky UI on PC, and you open up his menu, you can see his stats for approval and bravery. And they change over time, depending on the decisions you make in the dialogue with him. So, um, uh, if your approval is higher, if you've said nice things to him, you know, you've told him, be brave, Lucy, and we can do this, kind of, then he'll call, start to call you my friend. And he'll start to say, um, you know, say nicer things and use a nicer tone of voice with you. Um, whereas if you're meaner to him, then he'll be colder towards you and be more like, what do you want when you talk to him? So it's quite hard to get his approval that low at the moment. But um, so I'm kind of thinking when we come to Thieves Guild, maybe we can have some options where you have to persuade him. And then depending on your approval, you have more success with that or less. Um, would be nice. But then when it comes to Dark Brotherhood, that I think is a no-brainer. He should leave the player for if you if you join the Dark Brotherhood. But that is a really difficult technical thing to implement because I've got to decide: does he? If you what if you leave him waiting and you go and join the Dark Brotherhood and then come back? 
Does he know that you've joined the Dark Brotherhood? Yeah. How does he pick up on it? If you're wearing the armor, might he twig on it? If you, if you, what if you always leave him whenever you do any of the quests and then pick him up afterwards? Should he be in the dark about yeah. it, or would it be obvious? What if you are already in the Dark Brotherhood when you recruit him? What if um, you finish that quest line completely when you recruit him? Should he be okay with that, or should he already know that you were an assassin before? There's so many different nuances of it that I haven't quite figured out yet. But I know he shouldn't, if, if you bring him with you to do things like murder people, he shouldn't be on board with that. Mm. So, but I don't want that to be the end of the mod either. I don't want it to be, if you choose to do that, then he's left you and there's no more to discover with the mod. So, I don't like to commit to stuff I haven't released yet. Like, I don't like to tell you guys too much about what I may or may not have planned because I don't want to let people down. But so long as I set with kind of the precursor that this might not happen, I might not be able to do this. But what I would like to do for something like the Dark Brotherhood quest is have Lucian leave you, but then you encounter him again throughout the quest when he might not necessarily be on your side. So I'd like him still to be part of your story, but no longer as a follower, if that makes sense. So I'm in a similar way to how he to the role he takes in the Parthenax quest, but kind of more expanded. Yeah. That's something I'd like to have him do. Um, and there's a similar thing I'd like to do with Dawnguard. Because obviously Dawnguard has you potentially having the option to join the vampires. Yeah, yeah. So I'd like to explore possibilities for Lucian maybe joining the Dawnguard. If you do, if you take that route. And then he can be a you know, a character in your So story if style. you pick the vampires. So if you pick the vampires, he could pick the Dawnguard. And then you could have a sort of recurring nemesis there that you're emotionally invested in potentially if you've already had him as a follower. So I think that could be a good story to tell that. Again, I'm not saying I'm going to do that. It might not happen. It might be too tricky. That's kind of why I've put off doing Dawn Guard <laughs> for so long, because it's quite tricky to implement, because I have to do two whole separate storylines. But yeah, the point is, I wouldn't like it to be just, oh, you picked option B, you never see him again. You know, I think that's a shame, because then there's no point having him installed if you're going to do that. So I'd like there still to be content for whatever you decide. Yeah. So, yeah, that's kind of where it's I'm at. It's quite with complicated, this, this mod in life. But it is it? tricky, but it's fun, it's very yeah. rewarding. Yeah. You know, it's really, particularly when you get nice feedback from nice people about it. It's, um, yeah, it's, it's a really good thing to do, and I thoroughly recommend it <laughs> um, to anyone thinking about it. It's also much easier to get started than people think. People, a lot of people think, oh, it's something and I if, could never do. If but. people do want to create their own uh, follower mod, you have tutorials oh that's a very nice segue thank you for the plug yes um <laughs> i have a tutorial series which i shamefully haven't updated in who knows how long um but there's a tutorial series called how to make a follower mod like lucian flavius um available on my channel um so do check that out if you like and i will be doing new episodes of it soon i am aware i've been saying i'm going to be doing new episodes of it soon for the last year but I am going to be. Yeah. Um, so that should help you get started. And I really recommend it because it's yeah. really fun and it's really easy. You but, know, you can do it in a day. <laughs> but you do have other things to do apart from creating Lucian yeah. all the time. Um, I try and do too much at once, which is, mm. uh, slows me down. Um, I've got lots of modding stuff going on. Um, I'm currently and have been working on a different modding project for a very long time and I've very shamed for Skyrim them. yeah so for Skyrim so um there's so there's a uh, Jay Crodgemal who makes uh I might be mispronouncing that it's something I've only ever seen written down J never JK Skyrim JK Skyrim yeah. he has a mod called Dark End um which is inspired by Dark Souls it's a new lands quest mod and from way back before I even released Lucian I was helping him with a quest update for that um which involved a fair bit of my writing um, and I, because I'm rubbish, I shamefully let that get on the back burner for a long time and I've kept him waiting for years on it, but it is something I'm still working on and I've recently picked up active development on again. So that's something that I'd like us to get finished soon. So that'll be something that Lucian will have interactions with. Um, and that it's got some, you know, it's got a story there now added to it. And he's, JK's added some really awesome new stuff to the island to explore. So I've got that going on. I've got my own writing that I'm doing. Um, I've got a new book that I'd like to get out at some point soon. Well, I say soon, probably be in the next year or so. I don't know. Um, I'm doing a PhD, which is supposed to take up a lot of my time. Um, you would think that'd be where you're spending most. Of that time. is where I'm spending so, most of my time, yeah. especially as far as my supervisor's concerned. This <laughs> <laughs> um, is where I'm spending most of my time, though, genuinely. Um, and I try and have a social life. As well. You do. I try and have friends. It's nice to have. You have friends? I, I, I try. I mean, I hope they think of me as a friend. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
<laughs> so it can get quite busy, but I yeah. think it's really important to have creative hobbies that you enjoy. You know, and for me, my Skyrim stuff is my way of unwinding. Yeah. It doesn't feel like work to me. It's it's fun and and it's the same for Twitch. I stream on Twitch three times a week as well. So there's a plug. You can <laughs> tune in to that if you want. You Joseph Russell UK. Share me your links. Um, I'll put them on the end of the video. Amazing. Let's do yeah, that. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah. But you've also got. Is it a writing collaboration with Mikhail Romanov? Yes. So is that you have done your Joseph Russell is, research? And only a little bit. Yeah. Is, is that the guy Mikhail's monsters? Is that the same guy? Yes. So it's Mikhail it from it's it's him. So yeah. I way back when I started out with modding, this was this is pre Lucian. Um, I collaborated with him on two quest mods, um, which were House Dress and Sulphur and Fire. Um, and Sulphur and Fire is a May Runes Dagon quest dungeon mod that's sadly no longer available. Mihail took it down a long time ago to update it to a new version. And as far as I'm aware, there's not been any progress on that. I don't know what his plans are for that. I haven't spoken to him for quite a while, actually. Um, but I did voice acting and writing for that. It's quite small scale. Um, but that was something, something that I sort of cut my teeth modding on was, was building a quest for that. So that was quite fun to do. And it was really nice of him to collaborate with me. And I was quite proud of the work that we did on it. And House Dres, you can how, still get. How pre was it? Mm, maybe a year, maybe a year before Lucian, before a year before I before you even started. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I'd have to go back and check the dates, but I reckon yeah. it was around that. So about two years before Lucian version one came out was when I was doing that kind of thing. Um, so I got to voice a uh, mythic dawn um, leader like a mage. I got to do my sort of evil British voice kind of. <laughs> um, and um, and then I also did some voice work for House Dres which you can totally tell is me, because it sounds like Lucian doing a Khajiit impression and a Dunmer impression, respectively, um, where I got to do my Dunmer voice, kind of like that. And then I got to do my Khajiit voice as well. So, hello, my name is Jizigri, kind of. Um, <laughs> so I did those, um, and you can down you can still download that one, and it's got uh, like two different branches. Just for PC, or as far as you know, is it Xbox as well? Someone might have ported it to Xbox, but I, I, I don't know about that. It's definitely PC. Um, don't know about Xbox, maybe. Don't know what Mihail's plans are on that mm -hmm. front, necessarily. Um, but yeah, that was a lot of fun. I learned yeah. a lot. So it was that, and it was Dark End, and I did my typo patches going back even further. I did like spelling and grammar patches for other popular mods when I was first starting out, because that was something that was always like a, an immersion bugbear for me, was like having spelling mistakes in mods, so I did some of those. Um, and yeah, I just sort of yeah, went from that to that, and then I thought, oh, I'll make my own proper thing, do something actually of my own, which is where Lucian came from. Mm. And um, and it's been lovely. It's been really nice. It's been good fun. You in well, I, I guess predominantly you're interested in Inigo interactions, right? And there aren't, there isn't any more Inigo content planned. Because Gary's obviously yeah. working on V3 full time. I pretty much asked, asked Gary that anyway. Yeah. Because I mean, someone else asked me if there's any further plans, and and he's, he said he didn't rule it out. Mm. But it's oh, not, that's nice. It's not, okay. Yeah. 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 He, um, uh, but uh, at the moment, he's got to prioritise For sure. any go version 3. Which we all want. Losing my voice. Oh no, talking um, too much. <laughs> um. But uh, yeah, he said he didn't roll it out further down the line. But, mm. but um, version 3 has got to be his priority for the moment. So. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Which is very exciting. But obviously, yeah. we need to patiently wait. This is one thing I find um, with modding, is it's lovely how people get excited. but. I think I, you always feel a sense of pressure when you're working in this sort of thing, which I'm sure Gary feels, you know, because he's got so many people waiting on his stuff, like his orders of magnitude higher than Lucian in, in, in all possible metrics. Um, but uh, you always feel a sense of pressure and people say it in a lovely way. They come, they say, oh, I'm so excited for the new version of Lucian. And I'm thinking, I don't know when that's going to be ready. And they say things like, oh, I'm not going to play Dawnguard until Lucian has commentary on it. I'm going to wait. And I'm like, you might be waiting two years like I do, it might never happen i don't know how long and i and i never know because this isn't a full-time job it's not something that um that i have hours booked out for to do i can only do it as i find time to do it and we've talked about how much other stuff i kind of have going on at a time um so there's always this sense of pressure of wanting to deliver and not being able to so it's nice when people tell me they're excited about it but um yeah just it, it's got to be a lot nicer when people tell you that they're happy with what you've done. Yes, rather for sure. Than, can you do That's something the else? That's thing. Uh, yeah, when they're you happy know. with what we've got. 
um, which a lot of people a lot of people are. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. to deliver new stuff, but I can't, and I never do release dates. I, <laughs> when I started out with Lucy and I said, I'm going to do monthly updates, and I told people I was going to do monthly updates, yeah. and I was so naive. <laughs> to think I could do, I, you know, I mean, you do you stick to a recording schedule? Do you have no, I, I, schedule? I'm, I'm hoping when I get my studio, mm. when my daughter moves out of mm. the house and I get my studio set up, I'm hoping to at least do at least once once a week. Right. Um, hopefully more. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, I've got nothing. It's just as and when I can. Yeah. Um, because they say that's what you should have, don't they? And then for like to it, optimize the algorithm and to grow, you should. It have certainly helps. I mean, I, I watch my view spike go up when I post a video, and yeah. then I watch it gradually go down. Yeah. Um, which is kind of annoying. It would be nice to keep it up there. It would be, wouldn't it? But that's. Um, but yeah. I can't do that at the moment. So. Mm. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, for me, anyway. Yeah, modding release schedule doesn't work. Can't do it. Just, who have you co collaborated with to, with Lucy? Um, so got with. we've got dialogue with Kaiden, um, Hoth, uh, Ori, which is Song of the Green is the full name of the mod, but it's Ori. Um, oh, it says movie recording's been stopped. Maximum recording time has been oh. reached. Really? It, it wasn't saying that a few seconds ago, so I think we've only lost the last. Maybe your SD card is full. Yeah, so there we wh go. whatever you said when the camera shut off should yeah. be on here. Okay. So... We can roll back and if, if you find remember, wherever the most natural about, cut was. Man than I am. <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> it's obviously really fascinating stuff. Um, uh, we were we're talking about Hoth and other, other Oh, yeah, you were asking me, you've... yes, so you asked me um, what other follower mods or what other collaborations have I done? And um, we've done collaborations with um, Hoth and Ori and Kaiden, who are all great follower mods that you should definitely check out. Um, Anna NPCs. Um, uh -huh. which is a little bundle of follower mods, um, which you can check out as well. I've got interactions with some of those, and there's some more of those that I still haven't got around to implementing, but we will have. Um, there's a lot of ones that he'll comment on, like Velia and Sophia and the other follower mods Lucian has lines to say about, but doesn't interact with, because yeah. obviously those follower authors are no longer active members of the community, so it's. Um, I don't think that's achievable necessarily. So Velia as well, he's got... So he'll comment so, on Velia, yeah. but she won't talk back. Like, he'll just talk about, like, um, she seems nice, you know, that sort of thing. Velia's an amazing mod. That's That was precursor to Indigo. PC Indigo, only it? as well. Is it PC only? Yeah. Oh, and, missing out. And Gary collaborated with, I think her name's Emma? Yeah. Uh, yes. Um, yes, so that's the other one that Inigo talks to. Yeah. yeah with original dialogue. It's not available to me, unfortunately. Oh, so. Such a shame. It's very good. I would great great stuff. really like someone out there to make some videos of them together yeah but... yeah no, they're, they're, they're great and they have some lovely scenes and it was kind of that that inspired me collaborating with other mods you know when when in again everything Barry did everything first you know and and when I saw what he was doing with um with Velia and those conversations it's like oh we can do this with with other follower mods because I think it's really nice when mods talk to each other in the game it kind of fits makes them feel more like they fit together less yeah. obviously homemade and more professional seeming um, so I've got those collaborations going, and then I've got some upcoming collaborations, which I don't want to commit to too much on camera because you never know when people are going to have other stuff come up in life. We might not be able to deliver them the more. But um, there's a wave of new collaborations that I'm working on, um, and you'll have to wait and be surprised by <laughs> what happens with that. But if you're a fan of Dragon Age, then we've got some really fun stuff along that those sorts of in that dragon age direction that um that i'm really excited to see what we can make happen with that so stay tuned mm. that's the thing with inigo is that there's so much there to discover that's so niche you can play it for three or four years yeah. and then still hear things that you never knew yeah. were in there right well i and, mean you know and if your you, if you think you've heard everything just start a new race yeah yeah exactly Ch change gender yeah one of the things I think that was really cool about Inigo in, in the mod description when I first downloaded him was he was say, it said about how he'll be subtly different on each playthrough, like he remembers things. And I mean, yeah. there's things like his attitude towards spiders yeah. um, are some of the examples that I know of what can yeah. change. Um, I mean, you can say that you like squishing spiders or, you, or you're frightened of splattering spiders. Splattering squishy, yeah. squashy spiders, splattering squishy, squishy. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do it now on demand. <laughs> that took me many, many takes to record that. Splattering squishy squashy spiders, splattering squishy squashy spiders, splattering squishy squashy spiders. <laughs>
Yours, yours got lots of peas in it. But... Well, Gary wrote them. Um... Impervious Imperials impress impulsively. Impervious Imperials impress impulsively. Impervious Imperials impress impulsively. <laughs> Impervious Imperials that, impress impulsively. He, he was saying that because he showed us the list of um, oh the your, original your interactions. Of yeah, that. he said he and was who wrote yeah. who wrote what. He said yeah. he was surprised at who wrote what. And yeah, quite often wrote each other's. Yeah, we, we it was very collaborative. The way it normally worked was I would go to sleep, and then I'd wake <laughs> up in the morning and I'd see at two a.m. Gary had made a hundred changes to the document. Yeah, Gary doesn't um, sleep. He doesn't sleep. He is a uh, he is a mod making machine. Um, and uh, his, yeah, so he'd, he'd have written a bunch of stuff and then I'd, you know, we'd write suggestions. Like I'd write a suggestion for what I think Inigo might say here and then he'd go over and then update that with what, you know, change the wording and then he'd change it again when he's recording because when he does his recording, he apparently find, well, I find this with recording is when I'm saying some lines, sometimes it just doesn't sound quite right and you tweak it some more. Um, and then similarly, he'd write suggestions for Lucian and I'd adjust them again. So he wrote the tongue twisters scene and um, Ragnar the Bread, Oh, there once was, was a hero named, named Ragnar, Ragnar the, the Red, Red who came riding to Whiterun in from... search of fine bread. What? And the braggart did swagger and brandish his blade as he spread thick butter on the rolls he had made. I'm really not sure that's how it goes. But then he went quiet, did Ragnar the Red, when he met the Grand Baker Matilda, who said... Oh, you eat and you steal and all Ardo you need. Now I think it's high time that our people you feed. And, and so then came clashing and slashing of steel as the brave lass Matilda charged, charged in full of zeal. zeal. And, and the, the braggart named Ragnar, Ragnar was, was boastful no more. When his freshly baked bread... Oh, his freshly baked bread... When, when his, his freshly, freshly baked, baked bread rolled around, around on the floor... floor. That was that definitely was a 3am Gary... Yeah. extravaganza and uh, it was wonderful to wake up to but i had no part in uh, in the creation of that apart from that um when they sing it originally uh they have they do it kind of when they get to the end and it's like when his freshly baked bread oh his freshly baked bread and his freshly baked bread rolled around on the floor kind of like that kind of back and forth thing now that was my bit to make them suggest to do that but <laughs> otherwise it was all it was all gary's stuff really um, but yeah, we, we maybe wrote about half of the scenes each. I don't really yeah. know what the break. Yeah. You've seen it more recently than I have. Yeah. With the um, um, so it, you'll have read about some of this because there's some scenes in there. I think some people still have never discovered. Um, I, I I must admit I didn't. Be, it's it's kind of when when you're talking to somebody. Yeah. And they say like they show you a, a text and there's pages and pages and pages of it. Mm. And you're in conversation and you really want to sit and read it. Yeah. And you can't because yeah. you're in conversation. Yeah, that's fair. So you kind of end up flicking through it. And... Okay, so here's the thing: you can either leave this in or you can edit it out. Um, but it's something for you to hunt for on your um, on your playthroughs, looking for dialogue. If you use the console to take away Lucian's clothes, I can't do that. You also... Oh, you can't because you're on. You can't do I that. Want an Xbox. Um, there might be mods that let you change outfits of followers that you can get on Xbox. Um, 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 have a look. See if there are amazing follower tweaks. Yes, which you shouldn't use, but I think for the sake of just doing a, you know, if you installed not, that, I don't used want to it, break anything. and then and then, but if you then uninstalled it and rolled back to a save from before you did it, just for the sake of recording something, up to you. Anyway, they have scenes there which will play if Inigo and Lucian both aren't wearing anything, which Gary wrote, and you can only ever get that if you use the console or another mod to take away Lucian's clothes. By default, he'll always equip his fine clothes. Is um, he? I'm wondering why we are naked. In the snow. I think that's one of them. That's one of the scenes. Yeah. Why did you did you read that or? Um... Gary sent me that as a voice file. Uh, okay. I, he doesn't remember sending it, and I don't know why he would have sent it to me because it's completely out of context. I think that's me. one of the ones. That I we have there. that as a voice file. Yeah. Okay. Or it might be that that's from his original spliced, um, his, orig his original voice pack, kind of for the player and him being naked in the snow. But there is definitely something very similar for him, Luce, for him and Lucy. Yeah. yeah. So you could explore some of those if you can figure and out And I how. can't take away Lucian's default outfit. No, you can't. That's intentional. But if you do, there is that extra little bit of dialogue in there. Um, but he's Gary is great with things like that, of coming up with these really niche conversations that only one or two people will ever get to experience. I'm going to let and you make it. that video. Okay. <laughs> you can do that one. Okay. Because I might do. I, I don't want to mess with mods and risk yeah. breaking my game. Yeah, no, fair enough. So yeah. if you can do console commands, yeah. 
You should do that. Okay. And I will watch it. And okay. It okay, sure. Thank you. <laughs> Smash that like button, folks. <laughs> Don't forget to like and subscribe. Yeah. That's um, a good place to end, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose it probably is, yeah. 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 Well, well, it's been a pleasure. It has been. Um, I hope there's something here of this nonsense that you can use. Um, um, we shall see. You and, get uh, the full yeah. review. So, yeah. Thank you very much. Say, say goodbye stuff. for now. Yes, bye Joseph. for now. Bye, everyone. Bye for now. <laughs> Oh, I hope there's something there you can use. Um, that, that's a lot interesting.